Chapter 22, Part 1, Magnetism. So let's just start off with magnetic field bar of magnets. So permanent bar magnets have opposite poles on each end, which we call a north pole and south pole. Uh, like poles repel and opposite poles uh, attract. So as you can see here, the north pole and south pole attracts to one another. There is a force in, in the left direction. There's a force to the right direction. They attract. And uh, like poles, like two north poles, will repel. So that's why you can see that there is a force into this direction. And there is a force into this direction. One to the left and the other one to the right. If a magnet is broken to the half or to small pieces, each of these pieces will have two poles as well. In other words, if I break this magnet here into two magnets, each of these magnets will have a south pole and a north pole. Uh, so no matter how many times that you break a magnet, even to small pieces, those pieces will have a south and north pole. So, as I said, some of the characteristics, uh, they uh, consist of a north and a south pole, as I said. It is impossible to separate the north and the south pole from one another. So no magnets monopole exist. You cannot find just a north pole or just a south pole. They just does not, they don't exist alone. They are always together. A bar magnet can be cut in half an infinite number of times and you will still have a north and a south pole exist okay the direction of the magnetic field in a direction indicated by the north pole of a small compass needle placed at that point so if i want to find the direction of the magnetic field in here let's say that this is the direction of the magnetic field which we showed by b and it's a vector so i'm, I'm putting a vector sign on top of that if i put a compass here, okay, the compass needle will be directed in that direction, it will be aligned the direction of the magnetic field. Magnetic field lines, the magnetic field can also be represented by uh, field lines, okay, just, just like a uh, electric field, just like an electric field, as I said. So if you remember, we were showing the electric fields, for example, between two, two plates of um, a capacitor, for example, that we have a positive and a negative, and you, you were saying that there exists a uniform electric field inside that it, it calls E. For example, we, we can show B as well. We can show the magnetic field or B with the same lines. Field lines that start at the North Pole, so it starts from N. And ends in the south pole. So it starts from N all the way to south. So that's how it is. Field lines are always tangent to the direction of the magnetic field. Okay, in other words, they are aligned, they are in the same direction. So if I want to if I want to show a uh, line and I say that this is the direction of the line, so you'll say that this will be the direction of the magnetic field because they are in the same direction. The strength of the magnetic field is indicated by a number of field lines passing through a surface perpendicular to the lines, okay? And the field, uh, the field is stronger where lines are closer together. So in other words, if, if I have a uh, magnetic field, for example, that the lines are much closer together, the density of the lines are more, so we have a much stronger magnetic field compared to the, um, in the same space having, you know, only two lines. Um, so in other words, this one, B1 is greater than B2, okay? Because the, the density of the lines are more. Magnetic field visualization, as I said, so the magnetic field can be visualized using magnetic field lines similar to the electric field, okay? If, um, for example, you consider uh, having this uh, bar magnet here, the south pole is here, the north pole is here, and outside of the bar magnet, okay, so outside of the bar magnet, if this is my bar magnet right here, all right, and this is the south pole and this is the north pole, outside of the bar magnet, I have all of these lines starting from north 
going to the south, okay? And they are in 3D dimensions, and they are not only in X and Y, but also in, um, in Z direction, okay? So I have, and um, if I can show that this, this is a, let's say that this is in the third direction or the Z direction, okay? In other words, when you're outside of this magnet, all of the field lines are starting from north and going to the south. But when you are inside, when you are inside the magnet, they are going in this direction, from south to the north. In other words, if you're looking at this example here, this is the magnetic field lines, starting from north all the way going to the south, but once you're inside, they are going from south to, to north, okay? Earth's magnetic field. Earth's magnetic field, um, uh, as you know, we have a, a core, and the core inside the Earth is a uh, liquid type of um, core, and it's full of iron. These iron, uh, if you consider that this is the magnetic field, this is the Earth, and the core exists right there because of a very high pressure inside the core of the Earth, we have this core to be molten. In other words, it is a liquid form. And it is full of the electric charge. These electric charges are moving particularly fast because not only they are going up and down, but also Earth itself is doing one complete rotation every 24 hours. Okay? which is pretty fast type of rotation. So once you have all of these electric, uh, ma uh, electric charges or these charged particles moving pretty fast, one complete rotation, the Earth is producing a huge amount of uh, magnetic field, okay? The Earth is producing a huge amount of electric magnetic field, which is the B, which is actually to our benefit because the, the stability on Earth depends on the existence of this uh, Magnetic field, okay? So the magnetic north does not point towards the ge geographic north. It is a little bit tilted. The magnetic north is, is the altitude of 80 degrees. So it's not exactly up, up north. It's a little bit tilted, uh, about 80 degrees. So the up north is exactly 90 degrees uh, latitude, but the, the north magnetic field is about 80 degrees. The magnetic north pole changed position over time. It takes thousands, thousands of years to do one complete rotation. Uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, it's about 25,000 years. Angle of declination gives the uh, angle between magnetic north and the geographic north for a particular city. So depending on where you are, you can find the, the uh, declination uh, between the magnetic north pole and the geographic North Pole uh, for the particular city that you're leaving on. So magnetic force on a moving charge. Uh, consider that you have a magnetic field, okay, which we showed by B, and these are these lines going across from left to right, okay? If you have a charge, either positive or negative, and that charge is moving inside this magnetic field, okay, this could be a magnetic field like a um, produced by a north and a south pole, okay? Um, this could be a magnetic field just like a magnetic field of Earth. Any type of magnetic field. In, in this case, these lines are parallel. They are in the same distance from one another, okay? So this is a uniform. magnetic field, okay? This is a uniform magnetic field. Now, if, if you have a charged particle moving inside this magnetic field, all right, in, in a direction, this charge can experience a, some sort of a force because of the, its motion, okay? And that um, force can be easily found by this 
formula Q V cross B okay remember force is a vector it needs both a magnitude and a direction this Q is the amount of charge now I have put it inside a uh, magnitude bar means that it does not matter if it's positive or negative okay just the value of it we'll talk about it if it's negative what you need to do and then v is the velocity the direction of the velocity okay this is also a vector times and this is the cross product the b the b field or the vector b itself now if you remember from before so if you had two field lines for example if you wanted to if you have a vector a okay and a vector b and you wanted to find a cross b a cross b is a vector okay that's a cross b and it is a vector and it is perpendicular to both of these vectors Okay, so in other words, it is perpendicular to both of them. And this is called a cross product. A cross product, if you want to write it down, this should be equal to the amount of A times the amount of B times the sine of the angle between them, sine of theta. And that is our angle, theta. Okay, so here, if I want to write it down correctly, I would have Q. Okay, V cross B is V B sine theta. This is V, the velocity, B, the magnetic field, and the sine of the angle between them. Sine of the angle between them, as you can see here is the theta, for example. B is in this direction, okay? So this is the B direction of the B, all right? Velocity is in this direction, and they have an angle of theta here. In this case, in this case right here, um, the velocity and the B field are in the same direction. So this sign is the sign of zero. So here, sign of zero is zero. Here we have sine of theta. And here we have sine of 90 degrees, which is one, which is the maximum force. Remember that sine is always between one and the negative one, okay? So this one is the maximum amount it can have. And that's why you have the maximum force if they are perpendicular to one another. So a charge with a component of its non-zero velocity perpendicular to the magnetic field will feel a force, we know that now. It depends on the angle between the magnetic field, which is B, and the velocity, which is V. Okay, so it depends on that. For example, if this is your B and this is your V, then this angle would be the angle theta you're looking for. Okay? The field is maximum and its angle of 90 because sine of theta is 1. And the field is zero if the angle is zero because sine of theta is zero. The force is perpendicular to both the velocity and the magnetic field, exactly. Because if this is magnetic field and this is velocity, they have an angle of theta, then the force would be perpendicular to both of them. So it would be perpendicular to this, and it will be perpendicular to this. In other words, because F is Q, V cross B, and we know a cross product between them will be perpendicular to both of them. So that's why the force is perpendicular to both velocity and uh, magnetic field itself. So F, as I said, B, Q zero, V sine theta, B is the magnetic field, Q is the charge, theta is the angle between the magnetic field and the velocity, and we can write it down as, as this, as I have explained it already, okay? This I unit for the magnetic field is Tesla, okay? 
this I unit for the magnetic field is Tesla. And this is how we can find uh, what, what Tesla means, okay? So uh, F is Q, uh, V, B sine theta, okay? Now, if I want to write down what I have, F is in Newtons, Q is Coulomb, okay? V is the velocity, which is meters per second. B is Tesla, okay? And sine is just sine, right? It, it, doesn't not, it does not have, it's, it's just a value. It does not have any um, units associated with it. So I can find what Tesla is based on that. One Tesla is N times S over C times M. N times S over C times M. So one Tesla is that, that much. Sometimes we use Gauss and instead of Tesla. And just keep in mind that one Gauss is 10 to the negative four Tesla. Okay, so I also would like to put this in the box. So here we go. Right hand rule. And uh, this is very, very important. So. Uh, without any hesitation, let me go ahead and put this, uh, you know, uh, highlight this because this is very important. And we have different types of right-hand right rule. Um, and for, for the one that your book is showing is this. If you want to find the direction of the force, put your four fingers in a direction of the magnetic field, as you can see in this picture right there. The direction of the magnetic field, put your four fingers uh, along that direction your thumb is in the direction of the velocity and then your palm is showing the direction of the force so this force is coming exactly out of your hand okay that's what it means and they are all perpendicular to one another so this f is perpendicular to b this f is perpendicular to v and they have an angle of theta between them now, this is what the book is uh, doing. We have different types of right hand rule. The other one is this one, which you have your uh, one finger across the moving charge, which is across the velocity. Okay, so this is the direction of the velocity. The other one, uh, the other finger would be towards the direction of the magnetic field, which is B. Okay. And then you have the force being perpendicular to both of these. And that would be your thumb. Okay, and that's the other way. The way that I like to see it, the way that I, I always remember things, uh, and the way that I recommend you to remember is this. That you are... Uh, pointing your four fingers along the direction of the velocity or the direction of the motion of the particle for the charged particle, for the positive particle. And then your uh, B field or the magnetic field is coming right out of your hand, coming out. So a point, it means it's out and a cross, it means it's in, okay? This is just a way that you can, uh, we can see if, a, if an arrow is coming out of the page, uh, then you can only see the tip of it, the top part of it. And if the, uh, if the arrow is going inside the page, okay, then you can only see the back of the, the arrow. So that's, that's a philosophy here. Uh, so this is out of the page, and this is in. Now, the B field is coming out of your hand, out of your palm, uh, right there. And then your thumb will be showing you the direction of the uh, force, okay? This is extremely important. This is the way that I remember it, and that's the way that I want you to remember it. So this is the way that uh, we would like you to remember it. So I'm going to put some stars here. So you can remember that. 
So let's take a look. A positive charge enters a uniform magnetic field as shown. What is the direction of the magnetic force? So all of these magnetic fields are going inside. So B is inside. And the velocity is to the top. Okay. Now, so let's picture this one. V, the four fingers across V, sorry, the four fingers along the V. B is coming out of your hand and F would be in that direction. So now here, I'm putting my four fingers along the direction of the velocity. So let's say that this is my four fingers. And then um, the B field is, is going inside. So I have to put my hand in a way that the B field is coming out of my hand, okay, from my palm. And then the thumb will show you the direction of um, force. So let's say that this is the force, the B field is in, and this is the direction of velocity. Okay, inside is B is inside. That means that the force that's being applied to this charged particle is to, is to the left. So the answer is right there, to the left. Electron in the magnetic field, uh, this is example number one. So an electron in a particular accelerator has a, a speed of six times 10 to the six meters per second. So the things that we know is that the velocity is six times 10 to the six meters per second. So V is six times 10 to the power of six meters per second. Okay, the electron encounters a magnetic field whose magnet magnitude is 0.3 Teslas. So B is 0.3 Tesla and whose direction makes an angle of 45 degrees with velocity. So in other words, this, these two will find it will have a theta of 45 degrees. So in other words, I have a B and a V that makes an angle of 45 degrees with respect to one another. So part A is asking, what is magnitude and direction of the magnetic force on the electron? So uh, let's talk about the magnitude first. You know what F is. Q, V, B, sine of theta. So that's, that's what the magnitude is. So let, let me actually get rid of this uh, direction. So that's, that's what the magnitude is for, for V. If I want to put some numbers in, Q is a electron. So I have to have 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19. V is the velocity, which is six times 10 to the power of six meters per second. And B, is the magnetic field, which is 0.3, okay? And the sine of theta is sine of 45, which is square root of two over two. Now you can put this in your calculator and find what the magnitude is, but let's talk about direction. The direction, remember, this is a negative charge. This is an electron. So whatever that you do for a right hand rule, you have to reverse the result, okay? Or, or in other words, since this is an electron, you can use the same rule, but, but for the left hand. So you can use left hand rule, or you can use a uh, right hand rule, but reverse uh, or make the opposite in direction uh, for, um, you know, for electrons. So for electron left hand rule and for proton, you have to use the right hand rule. Okay. Now, 
If that's the case, your four finger, uh, four fingers are going towards the velocity. B is coming out of your hand, okay? B is coming out of your hand. And then the direction of the force would be in this direction. Okay. Part B is asking what is the acceleration of the proton? So acceleration F equals MA, right? So that's part B. And F is Q V B sine of theta equals MA. Okay, this is the Newton's second law. And now in order to find A, I have Q V B sine theta, which we found it in part A, divided by M, okay? Mass of the electron, M of E. Put some numbers inside, you can find them and just put it in your calculator. What would be the force and acceleration if the particle were a proton instead? So if, the, if it was a proton, proton instead, what you need to do is to change the direction. So the, and the F that it's been applied to a electron would be the same as a F that's been applied to a proton because they have the same charge. But um, what would be different is this. The difference would be the force. So the force of the electron is up and the force of the proton is down, okay? In other words, if I want to show the direction of the force of the proton, then this would be the force of the proton. And this is the force of the electron right up there, force on the electron. Oops, force on the electron, there we go. Now, everything else would be the same. The only problem that we have, the A of the electron would be different from the A of the proton. So because the masses are different, mass of electron is small, okay? So the A of electron is higher than A of the proton because M of electron M of an electron is a smaller than M of a proton. Okay. The motion of the charged particle in a magnetic field, a positively, a positively, po a positive, uh, positively charged particle in a electric field experience a force in the direction of the magnetic field, right? And in the magnetic field, the force is perpendicular to the field. This leaves a very different motion. So let's take a look at here. I have a electric field here and I know that it starts from positive, goes all the way to negative. Okay, so positive to negative. And um, if I have a proton here uh, or a positive charge, positive and positive will repel. So that's why there is a force in this direction. And positive and negative will attract. So that's why there is a force in this direction. And then uh, if, if there is a velocity in this direction, what, you, what the trajectory that you can see is this line right there. So this is the trajectory that, that you will be able to see if you are looking at the motion. All right? But it's totally different for a B field. In a B field, remember, your four fingers along the direction of the velocity. B is going out of your hand, your palm, okay? And then your thumb will show you the direction of the force, okay? This is a positive charge, so we're using the right hand rule, okay? If it was negative, then we were using a left hand rule. The same rule, but using our left hand. Okay, so now in this case, the force is always towards the center. So there is a force in this direction. And if, if you are here, then there will be a force in this direction. And if you were here, then there will be a force in this direction. If you were here, 
then there will be a force in this direction. So it depends on where you are, a force would be different in, in different directions. And they are all pointing towards the common center. In other words, you have a circle, okay? And kind of like that, imagine, okay? And then you have all of these forces towards the center. This can remind you of one of the forces that we learned in physics one, which is centripetal force towards the center, okay? And the velocity and the, uh, it has a force and the acceleration of that force was V squared over R. And R is the radius of this circle, okay? So you can see that same particle in an electric field and a magnetic field would, would have two different, completely different type of motions, okay? So in an electric field, the applied force is parallel uh, or anti-parallel to the field, we know that. In magnetic field, the applied force is uh, perpendicular to the field. So we know that there is no work done because if you remember what the work was, work was F dot D, right? Which was F D cosine of theta. D is the displacement. And they always have the angle, the force is always perpendicular. So they always have the angle of 90 degrees. In other words, this cosine is the cosine of 90 all the time, okay? Which is always zero. So there is no work done. Because the magnetic field is always perpendicular to the direction of the motion, the path of a particular, uh, of a uh, particle is circular. So we have a circular type of motion. So let's take a look one more time. Uh, if a magnetic force is perpendicular to the velocity of a particle, it creates a circular trajectory. So as you can see here, I have a proton or a positively charged uh, particle and the velocity is in this direction. The magnetic field is inside, okay? The magnetic field is inside. So in other words, I have to have my four fingers along the direction of velocity, then the B field should go inside the page, which is going out of my hand, out of my palm, okay? And then my thumb will show me the direction of the force. You can see it right here. I, I copy and paste the old picture that I liked. Four fingers in the direction of velocity. B is coming out of your hand out of your palm and V uh, and uh, your thumb will show the direction of the force. So in other words, for every single point, all of these forces will point towards the common center or the center of this circle, which we call it the uh, circular motion or the circular path. And we know that the acceleration, we know that the acceleration is V squared over R, okay? V squared over R. And um, so F equals MA, all right? So in other words, F is M V squared over R. But at the same time, we also know that this F is QVB, sine of theta, okay? QVB sine of theta, and this is V, and this is R by the way, okay? And then you can find based on that what you're looking for. For example, if you're caring for R, okay, this B and this B will cancel out. You will have QB over M MV, okay? To find the R, sorry, MV over QB to find the R. If you want to find the one over R, then it is QB over MV. But R regardless, R is, MV over QB that you can actually see right here. So depending on what you're looking for, you can use this formula to find uh, what you're looking for. So 
But with all of that being said, let's take a look at this example, example number two, alpha particle in a magnetic field. So an alpha particle has a charge of uh, plus 2e, so it's a plus charge, and a mass of, so let me actually write it down, what we have right now. So the charge or the q is positive 2e, so 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19, and with a plus sign, by the way. Okay, so let me go ahead and get rid of that. So plus 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. And a mass of m, 6.64 times 10 to the negative 27. It is accelerated from rest, so initial velocity is zero, through a potential difference of 1.2 times 10 to the six volts. So delta V is that. That is our delta V right here. Okay, and then enters a uniform magnetic field whose magnitude is 2.2 Tesla. So here we go, and that's our B right here, okay. The alpha particle moves perpendicularly to the magnetic field all the time. So here we go, it's always perpendicular, solve the problem, sine of theta is always one. What is the speed of the alpha particle? Okay, so we're looking for the velocity in part A, or the final velocity, because we know that initially it was at rest. So that's what we're looking for. The magnetic, the magnitude of the magnetic force, so we want to know what the F is, and the radius of its circular path, or what the R is. We're looking for those. So, so these are all the things that is, that's been given to us. Now let's see what, what we can do um, to find what we're looking for. First time, when we were looking at this, part A is asking the speed of an alpha particle via final, we know that there, is a, there, there aren't any non-conservative forces here. All we, we know is that we have a particle, a positive particle moving along, moving in a existence of a electric field or, and a magnetic field, okay? Um, so if, if that's the case, then we have a conservation of energy because there is no um, non-conservative forces like, uh, for example, friction. So uh, we have a, conservation of E or energy. So in other words, E initial should be equal to E final. So E initial is uh, kinetic energy plus potential energy should be equal to kinetic energy final plus potential energy final. So if that's the case, I have half MVI squared plus potential energy initially should be equal to half mv final squared plus potential energy final, okay? Now, if that's the case, I know for sure that the initial kinetic energy is zero because it started from rest. So this guy is zero. So I can write down like this, I can write down that half m v final squared is equal to u i minus u f. Okay, which means half of m v final squared is equal to ui minus uf is negative delta u, and negative delta u is delta v over q, right? We remember that from our uh, a few first chapters. So, v final is then the power of two would be equal to 
2 delta V over M Q. So V of final is 2 delta V over MQ under the square root. So all you need to do is to put some numbers in there. What you, once you do that, you can find what the value uh, for V final is, okay? Once you find the V final, the rest is easy. Let me tell you how to do it. The, magnet, the magnitude of the magnetic force. So the force part B is QVB sine theta, right? This sine theta is always one. So QVB is your answer. And how do we know which uh, Q is given? Two times of the uh, charge of an electron. B is given. V, which is the velocity, is coming from part one. So whatever it is, you just put it right here. Okay. And for part C, what we have is the radius of its circular path. So we know what F is. F is MA and it is MV squared over R. It is also, we have a value for it right here, right? We have a value for it right here, QV B is that value. If you solve this for uh, R, then R would be M V over Q times B. So this would be the value for R. And then you can find the value for force and then you can find the value for your final loss. I and mean, these are all the things that the question was asking for, right? Yes. So, mass spectrometer uh, used to determine the relative masses and abundances of isotopes uh, or to identify unknown molecules, okay? Because each mass would have a different uh, each molecule and each charged particle would have a different mass because this M is different, okay? They will have a different rotational uh, radius. So remember that R is MV over Q times B, right? MV over Q times B. That's what the R is. So if the mass is different, so if the mass is different right here, then the R would be different. So gases particle all is stripped in a, of an electron and accelerated through a potential difference. They then pass through a hole in a plate into the constant magnetic field. Those with the correct radius or R will strike the detector. Okay, I'll show you a picture of it in a second. And then using the conservation of energy and the radius uh, of a particle in the uh, magnetic field, we can show that this is the mass. So M would be ER squared over 2V times B squared. Experimentally, the value of B is changed. So in other words, B is a b uh, uh, is a function of t for example b is b0 cosine of omega t okay and this uh, t is changing so this cosine is changing uh, so thus this b is changing so it's a function of time so and then uh, this will cause um, different particles to hit the detector 
And that's the picture that I was going to show you. So uh, for example, if you have U-235 or uranium-235 and uranium-238, you know that the, their masses are different. So R, which is MV over QB, since the masses are different, their R would be different. Uh, because they have a different uh, circular motion, they have a different radius, so uh, they will hit the detector at a different angle. Okay, so this is the uh, mass spectrometer using the same basic, very basic physics ideas. So, lecture question number two A beam of atoms enters a magnetic field region. What path will the atoms follow? So, what we know is that these atoms are. A neutral and neutral particle do not uh, react with either the magnetic field or electric field. So they should not, uh, their path should not change because it, there, there is no force acting on them. So the answer is B because they are not moving. So, so the answer is B because they are neutral. They do not have charge. Okay. Lecture question number three. A proton enters a uniform magnetic field that is perpendicular to the proton's velocity. What happens to the kinetic energy of the proton? So it is entering a uniform magnetic field. So that's B right there. And uh, which is perpendicular to the proton's velocity. So in other words, we have, this is the velocity of V and then this is the magnetic field of the proton, uh, sorry, the uniform magnetic field that exists, and then they have a, uh, 90 degree angle between them. So there we go, 90 degree angle right there. What happens to the kinetic energy of the proton? So what can cause the kinetic energy to change? If you remember from uh, chapter um, five of physics one, a work done on, uh, because of a force on a particle can change the kinetic energy. In other words, you have K final minus K initial, okay? So if you consider that, then what we have here is this. We have a force times the displacement, okay? And uh, which is the change of the kinetic energy, okay? So force F, D displacement, this is the dot product. So you have a cosine of the angle between the force and the displacement, cosine of 90 degrees. Okay, because the display, the forces, this, this will be a circular type of motion, right? So what you have is that you have, this is the force towards the center at each point. Okay, and it is always perpendicular to the direction of the motion or to the displacement. So in other words, this would be your displacement. This would be your displacement. This would be the displacement they always have the angle of 90 degrees between them, okay? Now, if that's the case, then this guy is zero, and so delta K should be zero. So there should not be any change in the direction of, in the amount of mag, uh, kinetic energy. So it just stays the same. Magnetic force on a wire with a current. So uh, we'll talk about this in the second part of the video, chapter 22, part two. We'll talk about the magnetic force uh, on a wire and we'll finish uh, this chapter. So uh, this, this is the end of part one of chapter 22. We'll go to part two right, uh, uh, right now, all right? I'll talk to you guys soon.